Hello, and welcome to probably the randomest wrap up that I will ever do. Um, I'm on a ten and a half hour layover in Istanbul airport and I really want to use the time to get my September, September? Yeah, my September book wrap up done. I didn't read very much in September and I actually already have, this is going to be such a random wrap up, advanced apologies, I already have filmed reviews for two out of the three books that I read and so I really quickly wanted to hop on here to introduce the overarching video because the reviews that I filmed were kind of a bit random, filmed a bit separately at various times while I was in my sort of like slump and lack of organisation with YouTube. Um, so yeah, this will be a little bit patchworked together, but it will also be short, so hopefully there won't be too much of a problem. Um, the first book that I read, the first book that I'm going to talk about, is also by far, by an absolute country mile, the best book that I read in September. This was South Riding by Winifred Holby. The best way I can describe it, it was like Middlemarch, but set in the interwar years in a rural Yorkshire village slash town. And this was just absolutely, absolutely brilliant. It was a book with a really wide cast of characters which explored extremely different types of people and human nature and human ways of experiencing the world. There were quite a few things in the overarching plot, again, in a similar way to Middlemarch because it was exploring a community and trying to capture a community. There wasn't necessarily like one central plot line, uh, but I think the main characters were this new head teacher who was very liberal, very open-minded, quite progressive. And then this country gentleman whose fortune has, has kind of dwindled away because he's been paying huge amounts of money to care for his wife, who was in like a residential mental home. Um, and the differences between these two characters, but also the relationship between them, that's like one of the main central parts of the plot. But then there are numerous other characters around that and we get loads of insight into their lives and their thought processes, which I really thoroughly enjoyed. This was just, just a delight. If you enjoy well-written classics, which are insightful, which capture at once something about human nature and about a certain place in time, this one is definitely for you. Like, I really, really loved the way that it explored the impact of the First World War um, and looked at that kind of 20 years down the line in terms of this head teacher who is, is kind of the protagonist, uh, lost her fiance during the First World War and is a single woman and feels like there aren't enough men around for her to get married, even though that's something that she might have wanted to do. And so she's really thrown herself into her career with like an absolute passion. She's just a full, so full of life, the head teacher, uh, really inspirational. Another kind of tack that it had, which I thought was really interesting, is it had a focus on the role of local government in people's lives. So each different section of the book opened up with like a clause from the minutes of the local government, uh, which might be to do with housing, or it might be to do with building roads, or it might be to do with schools, that kind of thing. And it then extrapolated out to see how these seemingly incredibly dry and boring things which were passed or not passed in local government had an enormous direct impact on the lives of the mostly extremely poor people who were living in that area and also on how the politics within the local government i.e like at a personal level then led to this wider scale impact on the lives of people on their day-to-day -day lives so you know for example a businessman was also part of the local government and he would be wanting to pass things which were going to aid his own business interests that kind of thing which was really interesting i think local government is just a part of government that we rarely think about or if we do think about it we kind of think it's so boring that it doesn't have an impact but um yeah it was something that the author was clearly really passionate about would highly recommend this is wonderful okay i'm gonna transition you now into some clips that i filmed while I was back in the UK. It might be a bit jolty. Hopefully it will be okay. Hopefully you enjoy. And with posting this video, I'm now up to speed with my monthly wrap-ups, which satisfies the perfectionist in me and hopefully means that you won't get any more dodgy, patched together old videos about books that I read a couple of months ago. I have finally finished Titus Alone, uh, which I was quite disappointed by, to be honest. It felt very different to the first two books in the Titus series, and I actually kind of, I kind of feel like I wish that it hadn't been written, because I feel like if the first two just existed as a duology, which they totally could, then they would be way more famous and way more frequently spoken about. This third book honestly just feels a bit like a sketch, like it didn't quite feel finished. It had a lot of Peaks trademark 
writing style and eccentric characters, beautiful language was there, but the plot was just a bit all over the place and um, it felt almost like a dream scenario um, it felt like a series of distinctive scenes that weren't tied together in a very clear way for me. I never really latched onto and felt fond of any of the characters in the way that I had in the previous books. Um, yeah, it was just like, it was fine, but I kept trusting that it was going to become brilliant because that's what the first two books did and it, it just never did. Um, and I think had I not read the first two books and become so fond of Peak during those, I might even have properly disliked it as it was. It was probably about a three stars, like it was fine, but I definitely wouldn't really recommend it. However, I would really, really recommend reading the first two books in the Gormagas series as a duology and then like potentially just leaving them there because the third book was very different. It was in a totally different setting. Uh, it had almost entirely different characters and yeah, I just did not enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the first couple, which is a shame. The last book that I read is a non-fiction book. It's called How to Pray by Pete Grieg. This is obviously a Christian book and I feel like I, if you if you follow this channel you'll probably have noticed that I occasionally read Christian fiction, occasionally like Christian non-fiction books, um, and I don't talk about them loads on this channel because um, probably fairly obviously like faith and a faith journey feels quite personal to me. Um, so. But I, I do also sort of want to mention them because like it is a book that I read and I do talk about books that I read on this channel. Um, so I guess it would be helpful as I'm talking about Christian books to kind of know this perspective that I'm coming at them from. And I think it's a perspective that I would be intrigued to know if there's many other people out there who have the same kind of like relationship with faith as I do. So I definitely am not coming at it from a super Christian perspective, um, but neither am I coming at it from an atheist perspective. I feel like a lot of people I meet, either they're atheist or like they're super Christian, their faith means a lot to them, they're strong and quite confident in their faith, or they're kind of agnostic but they don't really think about it too much. And I feel like I'm probably more kind of agnostic but I do think about it a lot and religion is something that I'm definitely really interested in that I spend a lot of time thinking about but I definitely feel like faith is a journey for me and I'm probably in the fairly early part of that journey um, even though it's something that I have been sort of practicing and sort of thinking about quite a lot for really the majority of my life. So coming at it from that perspective, How to Pray by Pete Grieg was a book which very much did what it said on the tin and from that perspective I cannot criticise it. He basically takes the Lord's Prayer and uses it as a bit of a structure for how to pray. He has a little like acronym for prayer to help you remember the different phases of prayer. So P is for pause, taking a moment to be still. R is for rejoice, so you know rejoicing in the Lord, celebrating and being grateful for everything around you. A is for ask, so be that for yourself or for other people. And Y is to yield to whatever plan the Lord has for you in your life. That was quite a handy little acronym I found. Um, I do think that's quite helpful when I'm praying to just have like a structure to go through rather than feeling a bit like you're searching for kind of what to think about next or talk about next in prayer. I thought it was written in a really clear, accessible, friendly style and certainly in the beginning I was really really optimistic for it and thought I was going to love it. However, I think I ended up giving it about 2.5 stars because there just were some things in here which are a prime example of why I struggle with faith, where I just couldn't get on board with them at all. There were just some opinions that I really like strongly disagreed with. Um, and so because of that, I didn't enjoy it as much as I would have done. I didn't perhaps find it quite as useful as I could have done had I been personally more on board with a lot of the subject matter within the book. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you being here. I hope you're all doing well and I will see you soon in another video. Bye bye.